Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Today we're going to look at this small portable RCA television. And uh, the complaint is the sound isn't very good. Uh, although I get a lot of complaints in this field that really don't describe what's wrong. So the sound not very good could mean a number of things. Uh, like for example, someone will say, this record player sounds distorted. But really it's not distorted, it's just running slow. So, um, let's hook it up. Let's try it on the radio and see uh, what the radio sounds like. I don't hear anything on FM. Uh, something tinny. Okay, so the FM is pretty much non-existent. Let's try AM. And, and it's, this is the controversy now. Now actors are mad that the city is trying to prepare itself for what might be unrest. Go. So they're, they're damned if they do, they're damned if they don't. People from Louisville have called me white, black. So when the speaker's not moving, it uh, sounds like garbage. So the speaker's got a stuck voice coil or a rubbing voice coil. Okay, let's see if the TV works. There we go. Pots are really dirty. Let's see, uh, there you go, there's analog channel 6 in all of its uh, low power glory. That at least tells me that the. That switch is touchy too, so that could be why we also have sound issues, but primarily it's, it's definitely true that the speaker's messed up. So let's uh, get it open and see what kind of speaker we need. Alright, so here it is with the top off. They're pretty easy to get apart. Uh, really all you need to do, there are two screws on the bottom. There's one there, one there. There's another screw on the back, just above the antenna terminal on the right. And then there's a screw hidden on the handles on each side. And it just kind of comes apart. I have a little foot prop up here. Let me just put this back down. So. It's a relatively well-built chassis. Uh, no real shortcuts here. There's your uh, your AM and FM tuner board, which is separate from the television. Uh, you've got your Varactor for your TV, and there's your Varactor control right there. So no mechanical tuner. Um, but you got your IF uh, for both the sound and video. Um, you've got your horizontal output there on that big heat sink. You got an actual miniature donut style flyback, no cheapy stuff here. This was actually pretty well made. But anyway, we're not interested in this so much as we are the speaker, which is in the lid I just took off. So here's the speaker in the lid. In fact, if you want to take a look inside the lid, you can see that they've got all this uh, service guide information here. It tells you where all the transistors are, all the adjustments are what the pin out of the CRT is. I mean, they they really made this pretty service friendly. What perplexes me though is the speaker here. It's obviously the speaker that's made for it. They're using this bracket to hold it in, uh, which wraps around the magnet. But why would you have a magnet so close to a CRT? I guess the intensity of the magnet's not enough to mean anything. And they also have this snubber capacitor across the uh, voice coil here, so I'm not sure if there's an, a problem with oscillation or what. Uh, so let's take the speaker out and examine it. It's got a rubbing voice coil pretty bad, so we have to figure out if this thing is resurrectable or if we have to get another speaker. This is a 16 ohm speaker, so that's going to make it somewhat difficult. And as we see here, this is seen a bit of the elements.
yeah so let's see if we can clean this off a little bit this is pretty crusty let me take it outside and brush it off so it's true in my collection of poles I do have another speaker you can see that the height difference though is considerable so I need to do a test fit and make sure that it will actually clear what I need it to clear and try to put the case back together before I know I can use this if it clears then I'll use it but if not then we have to work on fixing that one and then there's of course the problem with the bracket not fitting around it so if all goes well I'll probably end up making a clamp or putting a epoxy or something in there to hold it uh, but for the moment let's see if it actually will work uh, in this cabinet so much like I thought we're gonna have a clearance problem and it's tough to see in here yeah, I can't really see around it all that well but anyway the speaker magnet is that square thing there which is going to hit the uh, top of the tune Oops. Yeah. so anyway it bumps into that which is a no-go so we're going to have to try to find a way to fix the original speaker which uh, I have a couple tricks up my sleeve so let's see what I can make work so typically the way that you deal with the uh, busted speaker is you have to cut away the dust cap let's see if I can do that without majorly destroying it and the idea is is to retrain the terrible little paper dust cap or the paper little former with the voice coil on it to the correct size and again it's getting this off of here without destroying it I'll probably just cut a new dust cover but looking down in there there's your voice coil gap I don't know if you can hear the mics will pick it up but you hear it rubbing so we need to create a shim to uh, to make this work and I use photographic film to shim the voice coil and make sure it's happy and then we're going to moisten it to get the uh, paper to retrain and then use a heat gun at a distance to help dry it off and with any luck that will actually retrain the former to be the correct size now the reason why you, the reason why you use photographic film is because it's incredibly thin and you can use it in uh, different thicknesses by just using layers of it to build it up but as you can see that fits down in there nicely and I just need to get one a full size um, I might have a slightly larger one that will fit in this gap better this might be too large Yeah, I'm going to have to cut that one down just a smidge. Yeah, let's just start taking a little bit off of here. And obviously, what we want to do is create a complete shim that will retrain or help retrain the uh, former. And you're going to have to play with it for a little bit before you get it right. I'm sure Mr. Speaker Man, Speaker Freak 95, uh, has a better method of doing this, but this is the way that I've used for many years to cure rubbing voice coils. So I just push that down in there as far as it'll go, and we're set. So now all I have to do is get that uh, paper former a little wet, and then we can retrain it okay so now I'm going to use distilled water not uh, tap water distilled is non-conductive and it won't uh, corrode your magnet and I'm also going to pour it in there because a spray bottle would get the cone wet I don't really want to get the cone wet so we're going to very carefully 
pour the tiniest little bit in here. Just like that. And I'm just going to kind of move this around. Work the shim a little bit to get the water in and around the gap. Uh, unfortunately, the shim is kind of holding the water in there. There we go. I'm starting to see the sparkle around the edge, so the water is getting in there. And what we're going to do is, is just let that sit there for about a half an hour. Uh, doesn't take long. About a half an hour, this should be trained with the shim in place. And uh, then what we'll do is we'll get the heat gun and we'll uh, dry it out and hopefully retrain it to not rub. So I'll be back in about a half an hour. All right, so this thing's been sitting for about a half hour. You can see the water is uh, down in the magnet cavity. Uh, so what we're going to do is take, we're going to dry this first. I'm just going to put the heat gun on a low setting and we're going to dry it out. And I'm going to hold the heat gun about two feet away from it. Just going to park it there and prop it up. And we're just going to wait a little bit. Yeah, so this is boring. I'll uh, restart the camera once we've uh, dried it out. All right, so after the heat gun, I pulled the shim out, and I took one of those canned air things, and I blew out the uh, voice coil gap. But so far, no rub. No scratchy, no nothing. Sounds good. So... In theory, I should be able to uh, just put a dust cap on that, pop it back in the uh, TV. We'll clean a couple switches and things, but that should make it work. Alright, so let me get a dust cap or something to put over the voice coil gap. Alright, so I just have a primitive little paper cap that I've cut down here. And I'm just going to take some evil speaker glue, put it around the perimeter, and stick it on there. If it'll let go of my finger long enough. And we'll just put a little bead of it down here just to be sure. And I should be able to slap this thing back in there. And in theory, it will work. Uh, this black professional grade adhesive from uh, Springfield Speaker works really well. So uh, I will just... This tacked already, so I think I'm just going to put it back in there. Assuming it will stop sticking to my hand. Alright, and then get the heat gun out of the way. We'll put the little bracket it has back on. It would have been easier to just swap the speaker, but because of size constraints in the speaker that I had on hand, that wasn't a possibility. So, in theory, This should work. So what let's do is, let's put the TV chassis on the bench. And let's see if we can... 
clean a couple of these controls back here. These ones, these switches back here we had issues with for sure. Just spritz some deoxid in there. And then we'll work those. As far as the two pots back there, uh, I should be able to get to those with the extension straw. Turn it upside down so it shoots up. There's one. And the straw needs to be reattached because it's starting to come undone there. And then number three over there. We'll just work these guys. good. Now in theory all we'd have to do is put it back together. And the speaker, which I'm going to bump the camera horribly trying to get this back together just because of available clearances, the speaker's just going to hook up down here. Let's hook up our power first since that one's the harder one to get to. breaking the terminals off. Let's, uh, there we go. Got the lid back on there. And start putting the screws back in. Make sure this is seated right. We've got one hidden underneath here. Here. Then we've got the two on the bottom. We've got one here. One over here. And then there is a final one. That's behind the antenna terminal. Which is up here. Now I think one of my screws might have fallen. Because I don't see it up here. But I do have a spare. Same thread type and everything, so we'll just do that. I can paint the screw black if I need to. Oh, never mind. It did hit the floor. All right, so the purists will be happy that it's maintained its originality. Speaking of purists, this guy even saved all the little plastic uh, battery thingamachiguses. I don't think you ever used batteries with this thing because the battery compartment looks way too nice. I think this has always been a desk queen or a nightstand queen or something. Okay, and then our fancy dancy power cord, which is hard to find. If you ever lose this, good luck. 
And so now, let's see if by doing this, we get reasonable sound again. My goodness, listen to him grade himself. A lot of volume. Pluses. Definitely clear. That's pretty magnanimous of you, Chris. Mm -hmm. Shadow. Very good. That's a legacy. No uh, rub. I've not seen it. You need to. It's a nice and clear campus. And St. Paul's Plaza. It's pretty loud too. Go back to TV here. I love the uh, distorted sound there. Maybe that's what he was talking about. I think the Lakers are going to go. So it's true that we did find a, a distorted speaker. But listening to that, it's pretty junky. So uh, I guess the next thing we should do is figure out if it's junky uh, on the radio on 87.7. That will certainly tell us. So let me grab a pocket radio of some kind. Should have one kicking around here. And I'll just hang the headphones over here. We'll turn this on. Yeah, the feed's screwed up on FM too. You can hear it through the headphones, it's just garbage. Uh, so the uh, over-the-air station right now, I guess, is having difficulties with their audio. What I can do, though, is uh, we can take the signal generator and we can go to 87.7, which is probably going to screw with the... Uh, and we can uh, see if the audio carrier is working. Yeah, so piping the uh, audio carrier through on my SoundTech 1000 at 87.7. It's a nice clear tone. So their uh, their station is definitely having some issues today. But given how it sounds everywhere else, I think it's uh, I think it's good, good to go. So there you go. There's repairing a small speaker uh, by retraining the voice coil former. And uh, cool little TV. Definitely uh, looks more like a, an office type thing rather than a portable or take it with you. But whatever. I'm sure this is jumping around because of the crummy signal. We can just take a look at it real fast here. And tweak the uh, horizontal and vertical controls which are inside the battery compartment. Let's see here if we drop sync and then come back. And then let's adjust the vertical so it's not so jumpy. In one extreme, it jumps. It's a good way to test whether your horizontal and vertical hold to set right is drop off channel momentarily and then pop back in and see how stable, how long it takes to stabilize. If it stabilizes instantly, you're pretty much on mark. If it rolls a little or if it tears a little, you're probably uh, a little bit off. Alright, well this thing's happy. So, thanks for watching the video guys. Uh, more stuff to come.